Greetings, dear viewers. A warm welcome to our channel where we decode and discuss literature. We're delighted you've joined us on this journey of intellectual exploration. We're deeply grateful for your support, which fuels our passion for unearthing the gems of literature. Today, we're delving into the poignant world of the Irish playwright J.M. Singh, specifically his play, Riders to the Sea. So fasten your seatbelts for a deep dive into the stormy seas of Singh's world. Without further ado, let us dive into the world of J.M. Singh's Riders to the Sea. Before we delve into the analysis, let's get familiar with the play and its author. John Millington Singh, or J.M. Singh as he is more commonly known, was a prominent Irish playwright, poet, and prose writer. Born in the late 19th century, Singh was a key figure in the Irish literary revival, which sought to promote the culture, heritage, and identity of Ireland through literature. Now let's talk about Riders to the Sea, one of Singh's most celebrated works. This one-act tragedy tells the story of an Irish family living on the Aran Islands, grappling with the relentless power of the sea that has claimed the lives of the men in the family. The play is a poignant representation of the human struggle against the forces of nature, exploring themes of loss, grief, and resilience. The play's main themes are deeply rooted in the harsh realities of life in rural Ireland at the time. The sea, while being a source of livelihood, is also a constant threat, a symbol of the omnipotent nature that is indifferent to human suffering. Singh's naturalistic dialogue and vivid imagery bring to life the tragic circumstances of the characters, making Riders to the Sea a timeless classic in the canon of Irish literature. Now that we are familiar with the backdrop, let us dissect the play scene by scene. The play opens in an Irish cottage near the sea. This setting is not just a geographical detail, but a character in itself, shaping the lives and attitudes of the people living in the cottage. The sea, with its relentless ebb and flow, is a constant reminder of the precariousness of life and the inevitability of death. In this first scene, we are introduced to Maria, an old woman and her daughters, Kathleen and Nora. Maria is a figure of relentless grief, having lost her husband, father-in-law, and four of her six sons to the sea. Her character is a testament to the harsh reality of life in this coastal Irish setting, where the sea is both a provider and a taker. Kathleen and Nora, on the other hand, represent the hope and despair that coexist in this environment. Kathleen, the older sister, tries to maintain a sense of normalcy and routine despite the looming tragedy. Nora, the younger, is more affected by the family's losses, and her fear of losing her remaining brothers is palpable in her actions and words. The plot progression in this opening scene is significant. It sets the tone for the rest of the play, introducing the audience to the central theme, the struggle between the human spirit and the unyielding forces of nature. The scene begins with the sisters discussing a shirt that might belong to their missing brother, Michael. This shirt, a seemingly mundane object, is a haunting symbol of loss and uncertainty that pervades the play. The dialogue is rich with local dialect and superstitions, adding depth to the characters and authenticity to the setting. It also hints at the impending doom that hangs over the family, creating a sense of foreboding that grips the audience from the start. The first scene is a microcosm of the entire play, encapsulating the characters' lives and their constant struggle with the sea. It sets the stage for the unfolding tragedy, painting a poignant picture of human resilience in the face of relentless adversity. That wraps up the first scene. Let's move on to the next. Now we move on to the second scene, which takes place on the same day. In the second act of J.M. Singh's Riders to the Sea, we begin to see the narrative and the characters unfold in a more profound way. The action remains in the same cottage on the Aran Islands, grounding the play in a sense of place that is crucial to its themes. We are introduced to the character of Bartley, the last surviving son of the family. His decision to go to the sea, despite his mother Maria's desperate pleas, is a pivotal moment in the play. It reflects the struggle of the individual against the power of nature, a theme that Singh explores throughout his work. Bartley's determination to face the sea, even in the face of inevitable tragedy, is a testament to the human spirit's resilience. Simultaneously, we witness Moria's despair, 
which is amplified by the loss of her other sons to the sea. This scene showcases her character development as a mother torn between her fear for her son's safety and her respect for his independence. Her grief, combined with her fatalistic acceptance of Bartley's decision, paints a poignant picture of a mother's love and the harsh realities of life on the Aran Islands. The second scene also introduces the Red Mare and the Grey Pony, symbols of the sea's omnipotence and the family's dependence on it. Bartley's decision to exchange the pony for the price of a coffin subtly foreshadows his fate, adding a layer of dramatic irony to the narrative. Moreover, the plot twist in this scene, the revelation of Michael's death, serves as a turning point in the story. It heightens the tension and sets the stage for the impending tragedy, making the audience anticipate the inevitable outcome. In essence, the second scene of Riders to the Sea is a masterclass in character development and plot progression. It deepens our understanding of the characters' motivations and the stark reality they inhabit, while also advancing the narrative towards its tragic conclusion. That's the end of the second scene. Let's proceed to the next. The final scene of the play is quite dramatic. The third scene of Riders to the Sea by J.M. Singh brings us to the heart of the story, where the climax and resolution unfold. This scene begins with the protagonist Moria, who has just lost her last remaining son to the sea. Moria's despair and grief are palpable, and Singh's writing amplifies these emotions, painting a vivid picture of the human condition. The sea, a recurring symbol throughout the play, is the antagonist that has taken away all of Moria's sons. As we delve deeper into the scene, we see Moria finally accepting her fate, marking the climax of the story. This is a poignant turning point, as Moria, who has been struggling against the inevitable, finally succumbs to her destiny. It is here that we witness a mother's heartache, a pain that transcends the text and resonates with the audience. The resolution of the scene is equally compelling. Maria, having accepted her fate, enters a state of calmness. The sea, once the antagonist, is now accepted as an integral part of their lives. Maria's acceptance of her fate is a testament to human resilience and the ability to find peace amidst tragedy. Singh's writing is not only about the tragedy of one family, but also a reflection of the harsh life of the Aran Island fishermen. The sea, a symbol of life and death, is a constant reminder of the fragile balance that these people live in. It is this balance that Singh explores in his play. In this scene, Singh uses the power of words to evoke strong emotions, making the audience feel the despair, the acceptance, and eventually, the calmness that Moria experiences. It is a testament to his skill as a playwright that he can make the audience empathize so strongly with a character and her plight. The third scene, therefore, is the crux of Riders to the Sea, bringing the narrative arc to a close while leaving a lasting impact on the audience. That concludes Riders to the Sea, but our discussion is not over yet. Now that we've discussed each scene in detail, let's talk about the play as a whole. Riders to the Sea, penned by J.M. Singh, is a masterpiece that presents a haunting portrayal of life in the Aran Islands. The play is a powerful exploration of themes such as man versus nature, the power of the sea, and the inevitability of fate. The sea, an ever-present entity, symbolizes the unpredictable and overpowering forces of nature. It gives life and takes it away, shaping the existence and destiny of the characters, who are constantly in its mercy. The sea is not just a physical entity, but a metaphysical one, embodying the character's fear, despair, and resignation to their fate. Singh also uses symbolism effectively throughout the play. The Red Mare, for instance, symbolizes the relentless and ruthless nature of the sea. The white boards used for Michael's coffin serve as a stark reminder of the imminent death that hangs over the characters. In terms of its significance, Riders to the Sea stands as a testament of the human spirit's resilience in the face of adversities. It's a gripping narrative of survival, loss, and acceptance of fate, presenting a poignant portrayal of the harsh realities of life in the Aran Islands. And there we have it, a comprehensive analysis of Riders to the Sea. That brings us to the end of our discussion for today. We've delved deep into J.M. Singh's Riders to the Sea, unraveled its intricate layers, and discovered its profound reflections on life and loss. 
A big thank you for joining this literary exploration. If you found our journey enlightening, do hit that like button, leave your thoughts in the comments, and share this video with fellow literature enthusiasts. Don't forget to subscribe for more such insightful discussions. Remember, literature is the mirror of society. Keep exploring, keep learning. Until next time, goodbye and take care.